Good afternoon. Welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of St. James. Today is Friday in the third week in ordinary time. Our opening hymn is number 674, Christians, Lift Up Your Hearts, number 674. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Good afternoon. Today we celebrate a very courageous person, Angela Medici. She died in the year 1540 in the city of Brescia in Italy. And she was the first person to establish a religious order for teaching poor young girls. She was so courageous in promoting the devout life among what we will call regular, everyday people. That is not just the bishop, not just the priest, not just the deacon, not just the religious sister or brother, but everybody has a way to become a saint in their own station of life. And she greatly promoted the idea of following the direction of God's Holy Spirit, to follow God's Holy Spirit. Of course, we don't do that as often as we should. So therefore, brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the Virgin, Saint Angela, never fail to commend us to your compassion, O Lord, we pray, that following the lessons of her charity and prudence, we may hold fast to your teaching and express it in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Remember the days past when, after you had been enlightened, you endured a great contest of suffering. At times, you were publicly exposed to abuse and affliction. At other times, you associated yourselves with those so treated. You even joined in the sufferings of those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property, knowing that you had a better and a lasting possession. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence. It will have great recompense. You need endurance to do the will of God and receive what he has promised. For after just a brief moment, he who is to come shall come. He shall not delay. But just one shall live by faith, and if he draws back, I take no pleasure in him. We are not among those who draw back and perish, but among those who have faith and will possess life. The word of the Lord. of a man made firm, and he approves his way. Though he falls, he does not lie prostrate, for the hand of the Lord sustains him.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, this is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day and the seed would sprout and grow, he knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground, it is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. At the very start, I would like to say I thought, and maybe you did too, I thought that the rendition of the psalm today was really beautiful. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Consider this scenario, brothers and sisters, or maybe today I'll revert to my former habit and call you my beloved. So consider this situation. You've been living the usual life, you know, getting up in the morning, drinking your coffee, going to work, working all day, coming home, dealing with your chores, or maybe you're retired and you get up and you try to figure out what are you going to do today, and you do it, and then you're tired, and, but you've been living the usual life. But something happens, some unfortunate circumstance occurs, which causes you to pray more diligently than usual. And then, in some way, you wake up realizing that it was a dream, that all these terrible things that were going on, it was so bad. In fact, somebody was approaching you with a weapon, and it looked like any moment that they were going to strike you, and somebody says, hey, hey, what? I'm about to be killed, what? <laughs> it's a dream, wake up. And you wake up, and you find yourself there laying in your bed, the sheets are all undone, the pillows are all over the place. You're sweating, and you say, oh my goodness, it was just a dream. Wow. So you go to work. I mean, you still can't quite get over it. It's like, did that really happen? Wow. So you tell people, you say, you know, I had this dream. I thought for sure I was a goner. I mean, I showed it. This was the big one. I mean, even Fred Sanford couldn't have handled this. I mean, it was bad. This was the big one. And I was told to just wake up. And I woke up and it was just a dream. And you try to tell people and they look at you like, what is your problem? <laughs> you know? And you try to, but don't you, don't you get it? I mean, don't you see how profound this is? I really thought I was going to die and it was just a dream. And as you're talking to them, you realize that they're just asleep. They're not even really paying attention to what you're saying. So word gets around about you and your dream and what you've been saying, and people start to make fun of you. Oh, there she goes, You're telling people about that dream again, <laughs> you know? And people start to avoid you. They start, you know, saying not nice things about you, and you end up being isolated. 
So just imagine, now you are in the same situation as before, and you're having a difficult time in your usual life. And an incident causes you to pray, and in that prayer, you discover God's love, and you start to discover the deeper spiritual life. Your former life and all that you were doing before is more and more looking like it was a dream. And so you start telling people about Jesus. You start telling people about the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. You start telling them how you started to go to Mass every day and receive communion and how you start going to confession on a regular basis and that you're now looking for a spiritual director and they all know how your life was before and they're looking at you like, oh, okay. <laughs> Again, what's your problem? And you try to tell them, but don't you see? Jesus, Jesus intervened in my life and, and he changed everything. Yes, of course he did. <laughs> no, 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 but I mean, but you're baptized. Why aren't you going to church? Hey, you know, holy roller. <laughs> you know, don't start that mess with me. I mean, that's your business. You want to go to church? And, you, and they start going, there she goes, talking about Jesus again. Give me a break. <laughs> you know? And you end up being isolated. Can you imagine? This is what is being talked about in the first reading. And I want you to notice something very interesting. Because remember I told you, we kind of hear it like a Charlie Brown cartoon. The word of the Lord, and we all say, hey, thanks be to God, right? But did you really hear what was being said? It says, remember the days past when after you had been enlightened. Did you hear that when it was being read? What is an enlightened person? Are you an enlightened person? What would be another way of saying enlightened? You know, the word um, means to have light coming from within you, right? That there's something happens that lights you up you know what it's also called? Illumination, right? Enlighten, a light, illumination. And then what would those people who have this illumination be called? Illuminati. When after you had been enlightened. And then it says you endured a great contest of suffering. Of course you did, because you start to realize that everybody is fast asleep. They're dreaming their own dream of life. They create all these scenarios in their minds and they react to the scenarios that they create in their minds and they never come to realize that it's not real. But a person who comes to know Jesus starts to realize that you can wake up from this dream that he was brought to this earth so that you and I would no longer be slaves of the devil, that we would no longer be slaves of sin, but that in fact we would become sons and daughters of God. And if you were to become a son or daughter of God and know it, how could you possibly keep living the same way as before? So the writer is here saying, if you've had this experience and you've undergone the isolation, people looking at you like this and all that, you have a choice, don't you? You could continue, persevere, because the kingdom of God is unveiled a little at a time. Jesus said it starts out small and gradually expands. And so that enlightenment, that light grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. And you could stick with it, stick with the process. Keep coming to church, keep reading your scriptures, keep praying your prayers. Or you could turn back. You could say, you know, I don't need this. Everybody's making fun of me. 
you know, church every Sunday when I could be going to the shopping center like all my friends. You know, church all the time, you know, when I could be at that party. Why should I have to pray the liturgy of the hours all the time? I mean, come on, a little bit of religion. But why all this? Yeah, you could give up and go back. You could go back to sleep. But when you go back to sleep, what's going to become of you? So, St. Francis de Sales wrote, it is an error, or rather a heresy, to wish to banish the devout life from the regiment of soldier soldiers, from the merchant shop, the court of princes, or the home of married people. Purely contemplative monastic and religious devotion cannot be exercised in such states of life. However, there are several others adapted to bring perfection to the living in the secular state. The kingdom of God grows and grows and grows. And as it grows and grows and grows, you reach something called perfection. That perfection in the spiritual life is attainable for every man and child, every man and woman, Every person can achieve spiritual perfection in Jesus. You don't have to only be a consecrated religious person. So Angela Medici, an orphan, gave up her patrimony and joined the third order of Franciscans to live in poverty. She founded a religious institute called the Ursulines, and they were to remain in the world live celibately, practice mental and vocal prayer, and be affiliated to their own parish. She says, make a new life, but pray and make others pray so that God will not abandon his church, but we reform it as he wills and as he sees what is best for us and for his greater glory. And so what does that mean? We are not among those who draw back and perish, but among those who have faith and will possess life. Why would you turn back? You're on a journey. Keep going. Keep praying. Keep resisting the devil. Keep resisting the temptation to fall back asleep and be like all the others in their own little dream world fantasy and drama and miss out on eternal life. If you, after you have been illuminated, if you, after you have been enlightened, go back asleep, what's the point? Let us stand to pray. Aware of God's presence in our lives and in the world, we place our needs before the Lord. For missionaries, may God grant them the gift of endurance to live and share their faith when they face adversity. Let us pray to the Lord. For the needs of the world, May the Lord have mercy on the suffering and trials of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who are sick, may the Lord bring them healing, comfort, and strength. Let us pray to the Lord. For those gathered here, both physically and virtually, may the Holy Spirit increase in us a spirit of conversion, in openness to the Lord's work in our lives, let us pray to the Lord. And let us pray also for our brothers and sisters who may be tempted in this very moment to give up, that they might continue to persevere with the Lord, that they may know the powerful intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, that they may know the power of the Holy Spirit, 
and continue that they may attain the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died in the light of Christ, especially Shariah Kanadi, for whom this Mass is offered, may the God of compassion bring them to everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Eternal Father, hear our prayers and shower us with your grace. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the oblation made by your consecrated people in commemoration of blessed Angela Medici be acceptable to you, we pray, O Lord, and grant that by participation in this mystery, we may reflect the pattern of your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth that gives you promise in the new world to come. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one, by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Forever and ever. Amen. 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 
We are not like those who turn back and lose faith. So therefore, let us pray now for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion hymn is number 867, Praise and Thanksgiving, number 867.
Let us pray. May this holy meal give us strength, almighty God, so that by the example of blessed Angela, we may show in our hearts and by our deeds both fraternal charity and the light of truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. And have a most blessed day. The closing hymn is number 686. Sing a new song. Number 686.